but let's talk about Mac Jones. So I uh, put out an article yesterday that talks about NFL Network's analytics expert, Cynthia Freeland. She was on NBC Sports Boston talking with Phil Perry, and they were talking about Mac Jones. And, you know, we're all talking about Mac Jones. The heat is on for him to have a great third season, which I think so far from what we've seen, he's on track to be better. Um, I mean, not even because we've seen a whole lot from him in the offseason thus far, but, you know, they have Bill O'Brien, which I think is a huge plus and then we have adrian clem who is going to be coming in to be the coach of the offensive line so that's two massive improvements right now from if you compare to where we were last year that's going to be gigantic for him so um that's already a a huge a huge improvement um so i thought that what she had to say was really interesting if you guys aren't familiar with her she's all about the numbers she breaks down stats and analytics and uses numbers to disprove and prove whatever she wants to talk about and so she came up with this new statistic that um kind of proves that mac jones is not as bad as some people are trying to say he is and that he has the potential to be just as good as the Patriots need him to be. So she said, I really look at the best you can do is when you can do. Let me start. I really look at the best you can do is what you can do from a clean pocket because most quarterbacks get pressured on about a third of their dropbacks. Some games it's more, some games it's less, but let's all just call it 30% on average. So what are you doing on those other two thirds where you're not under pressure? Are you throwing precisely to a lot of the root tree? Because there are some things to always take into consideration. Does your wide receiver run the routes that you're expecting? What was the play call? Clean pocket. That to me is your ceiling. I think Mac Jones is in a good spot. First of all, he'll have Bill O'Brien. I think he's going to create a system that makes a lot of sense. Obviously the familiarity, this Alabama connection, all those things. So, um, Phil Perry elaborated and used some more numbers. He said, Mac Jones, about 71% of his dropbacks were not pressured. 246 attempts. He has a completion percentage of 71.7%. He averaged 7.3 yards per attempt from a clean pocket. And he had 11 touchdowns against just three picks from a clean pocket. It turns out he has the fifth best grade of any quarterback with at least 100 dropbacks last year when they kept it clean. So this was just a dysfunctional Patriots offense. This was a substandard Patriots offense if they were even close to just average you'd probably be looking at a 9 or 10 win team a team that makes it into the postseason Mac Jones trails only in terms of a um, kept clean grade Joe Burrow Patrick Mahomes Jalen Hurts and Trevor Lawrence so I think that basically what she's saying is what we have all talked about throughout the entirety of the season. Maybe we didn't have the numbers and maybe we didn't have the statistics that we were, you know, spitting out to, to back up our argument, but we knew that the offense was dysfunctional from the play calling to the offensive line coaching to the quarterbacks coach. It was just all a hot mess. It seemed like there was just not great communication. There wasn't a lot of, good relationships between the players and the coaches. I mean, we had players calling out coaches and um, their preparedness for opponents and whatnot. And of course, then you had that bombshell report from the Boston Herald that revealed a lot about the inner workings behind the scenes. And um, yeah, I think that... um, it, it didn't leave a lot for Mac Jones to be successful. And I think that people need to recognize that because a lot of the blame has been put on Mac. And I think in my opinion, it's very unfair. I think that there's a lot of blame to be spread around and I've talked about it. I've written about it. You know, Matt, Patricia, Joe judge, Bill Belichick deserves a, a, quite a bit as well. And Mac Jones does deserve to be blamed for things because there were games where he did look pretty bad but there were some games where he looked really great too and I think after that report came out in the Boston Herald it provided more perspective to things that we weren't seeing because we can only we can only react to the things that we see with our eyes on the field or in press conferences on in practice all of the other things it's hearsay it's a source you know you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt no matter who is reporting it and 
I think that expecting a second year quarterback to overcome all of that was asking too much. Um, and it seems now that we've had some time to digest the 2022 season, there are some more Patriots players who are pretty critical of Mac throughout the year coming out and finally uh, kind of letting him off the hook a bit and, and acknowledging how difficult the year must have been for him. And I don't know if that's just from reading what we've all read or maybe they've spoken to people who are currently within the organization and they heard about it from, you know, directly from the source of someone who went through and experienced the entirety of the season. Um, but I, yeah, I think that we need to just lay off a little bit, give him some more time. Um, he's already doing work, which we're going to get into that after this, um, after I'm done with this little segment here, but he's already doing exactly the same things that he was doing last year. He's putting in work and it's only February. Um, so clearly he's taking this very seriously. And, um, I think we have a lot to look forward to. I think kind of how we felt coming into the 2022 preseason where we knew that Mac had been working with, you know, Tom house and, um, working on his nutrition and strength and all of that, how excited we were to see this second year jump. I think that's more of how we should be feeling now. And that is simply because of the coaching changes and people need to remember how big of an impact coaching has on a team and a player.